So, slum conditions, poverty, overcrowding. This really was a pretty grim area. So a lot of Jack the Ripper's victims would have spent a lot of their time in pubs like this. Well, not actually this nice, of course. Uh, can I have a, uh, a pint of bitter and an orange juice, please? Yes, sir. Here's I working. Now, in these run-down old gin palaces, as the saying goes, you could be drunk for a penny or dead drunk for tuppence. How much is that? That's three pounds, sir, please. All that being hammered the whole time can't have been so bad, considering the prices of drinks today. But for a lot of people back then, getting completely plastered was the only way that they'd get through the day. Now, somebody who can tell us a bit about the lives and times of the people that lived in Victorian Whitechapel is Professor Bill Fishman. Here we are, Professor. Thank you so much. Thanks. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, my boy. So just how much of a problem was alcoholism back in this part of London in the 1880s? Very widespread, naturally. Thousands of people living on the margin of subsistence. A great escapism. What? Drink. Person working in a sweatshop or in the docks or in the fruit market, living on the margin, comes home, little to eat, straight into the pub, the locus of freedom for every labouring poor in this area. Were there more pubs per square mile in those days? Oh yes. Across the Mile End Road there was 50. From Allgate East to the Mile End Gate there was apparently 50, if I remember, um, drink shops. Was this a lawless area, generally? Oh, it was very lawless. Fighting in the streets. There was every day. If you look at the police records, there was always Robbery with violence, violence between uh, women particularly, it was very strange. Women would be fighting each other in the streets. It was regarded as a puppy show in those days. So it was a pretty law, and by, understandably so, it was part of the entertainment of the poor. Let's get down to the nitty gritty. How prevalent was murder? Well, reasonably so. I mean, if we're going to the Ripper murders, only five days, before, five days after the first murder, there was a guy called Jack Burnett in the Isle of Dogs who took a hammer and calmly beat his wife to death. If you look at the police records, there were at least within three months three uh, murders committed in this area. And it was quite prevalent. And also the Salvation Army girls used to walk round the streets at night picking up, not necessarily murdered bodies, but bodies of women beaten by their husbands. They took them locally round the corner here to the first battered wives' home which was set up by the Salvation Army. So murder and violence was naturally prevalent. So this part of the East End was a pretty rough place all round, coughing up plenty of suspects for murder. Back in the East End, I asked Professor Bill Fishman about the social ramifications of the Ripper case. It was a catalyst, one of the great catalysts for social change in this country. There were two fears amongst the established classes. One was a fear of republicanism. There was an anti-monarchical feeling amongst the people. Secondly, if you read the local press, they were frightened that the next year, 1888-89, was the centenary for the French Revolution. And they feared revolution. Then the Ripper came along, this so-called anarchist, as they called him, killing people. It put the fear of God up the establishment. And then they realized, here was a center of crime, also a center of disease. We had to do something about it. And he got for the first time, state intervention to remedy poverty, disease, and crime. And the Ripper murders focus the issue and therefore you've got the beginnings of the London County Council you've got the uh, uh, modernizing of the police force which had failed to catch the ripper you've got the electrification of the whole of the Whitechapel and commercial roads within three months if they had been lit up you might have saved two or three lives of these poor prostitutes all were progressive changes which were forced on the government revealed by the Jack the Ripper murders of 1880